Hey guys, it's Blockchain Brad and it's awesome to be with you today. Today we have some interesting news coming from Australia with regard to blockchain um, and it's most likely something you haven't heard of before because not many people I've noticed have been publishing or talking about this. Um, I also want to let you know guys, I put in a little bit of a fun intro just playing around with um, Blender and a few other things. So it's not, you'll notice there's a few different brands that have come up on the intro. Uh, just so that you know, it's not really designed to give you a hint of anything I'm investing in. It was just for fun because I could find these PNG files really easily. So guys, just, get, um, just to get stuck into today's topic, it is the Red Belly blockchain from Australia. And I thought I'd give you as much information as I can in a short period of time so that you can go and do your research and check out what it's all about. So guys, from the University of Sydney has done some amazing research recently in the last year or so, and it was led by a, uh, uh, I guess a team leader named Vincent Gremily. And on screen here, you can see a bit of a link um, with regard to that. Um, basically, the university has found that they ha have isolated uh, different com key components, or they've deduced methods to make it extremely scalable. So you can see on the title that they managed to scale 660,000 transactions per second, which was 11.5 times what uh, that of Visa, and 95,000 uh, times faster than the current cap capabilities of Bitcoin. Now this was published only recently, and obviously with things like Plasma coming up uh, for uh, Ethereum and for other for light Lightning Network in the Bitcoin SegWit core. There's amazing um, innovations that are happening to try and speed up scalability and to try and make it more competitive in, in the blockchain space. However, this is what I'd regard as a third generation uh, blockchain, um, up there with Cardano and Icon Foundations Plan and our Aeon, another one. And it's just worth knowing guys, because scalability is a fundamental, without that, then really they're not gonna compete for uh, enterprise markets, business markets, and overall um, utility in the pu public blockchain space. So guys, if you wanna know more about it, it was a really interesting read. Um, I found that uh, at the moment, uh, I'm in trying to contact different stakeholders in, in the University of Sydney, particularly Vincent and some of his other colleagues, to try and better understand exactly what the plan is in terms of whether they're gonna do an ICO or whether they're going to utilize it in some way beyond research. But it's great to see that there are some Australian competitors in the market, um, simply because uh, up until this point, we haven't really heard a great deal of uh, generation two or three blockchains, apart from the original Bitcoin. Uh, so yeah, I thought it was really interesting. If we go on to the next one, this next article I want to show you was, again, reinforcing that Australian scientists have actually leading uh, the way for Australia, not for the world, but for Australia in uh, their research in the blockchain uh, industry. And the, this just reinforced once again, the Red Belly blockchain is, is the real deal. It was published only recently on the 25th of October, and it was published by the Business Insiders. So it goes into a lot of detail about exactly how it works. And you can see that there's some pretty cool um, pieces of information here. One of them, again, reinforces the, the competitiveness with Visa. But some of the other things are that one of the notable improvements from earlier tests that they've done is that uh, it can really uh, speed up the use of the, the number of transactions according to a test net of 100 machines. So that was pretty cool that they did that. And they did that in many different countries as part of their test. Um, so their, their big premise was trying to be comparable and competitive with current, uh, current and real world businesses like Visa. So then we go along and we can see that even banks are taking this seriously as well. Um, so they've considered uh, the applications for banks uh, within Australia currently and then obviously if it's usable they, it may branch out to other places around the world. So guys that was really cool to know. Um, moving across to the next article, just reinforcing once again just the value of this uh, as a blockchain. This came from CryptoCoins News and it, the title is University of Sydney's Red Belly Blockchain Scales. Again, reinforcing just, just what it can do. Um, and I, I, just, to re, just to explore this a bit more, I went and contacted Craig Wright because I wanted to know whether he knew about it and no doubt he would have. Um, but I wanted to know what he's, whether he was concerned about the scalability capacity of this new blockchain in comparison to, uh, you know, at the very least, and China at the very best, you know, his association with Bitcoin. And he wasn't concerned. And his response was, and I'll show you later, that uh, the original Bitcoin, um, whether we call that Bitcoin Cash, its current model, whether we call it Bitcoin SegWit or Bitcoin Core, 
whichever one we want to deem as the original Bitcoin, all of them were designed based on the original to be able to scale at this length, um, this size. Um, it's just that it, whilst it was designed to, doesn't mean necessarily can do that yet. And that's the important distinction, and that's why so many different projects are on the on the go right now to improve Bitcoin's current uh, uh, scaling capacity. Uh, so the next thing I want to show you was this is the actual website for Red Belly Blockchain, and if you want to go and check it out, it's really worth having a look at. It's still in its very you know original state, but down the bottom here you can see some key people. So you've got Tyler Crane, who's a postdoctoral fellow currently doing his research in blockchain. You've got Vincent Gramley, who's an academic in the University of Sydney, who is probably the leader, as I said. And then you've got some other people there. I won't mention them all, but if you would like to try and find out more, these are the people that you probably want to try and get to to understand uh, exactly the, um, the 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 fundamentals of blockchain, the Rebelly blockchain. So um, guys, again, this is another article from Computer World. It was about the fork-free Red Belly blockchain and it cups double spending danger. And that's really important because as many people would know with um, like Ivan on tech has talked about with the replay issues, um, this really tries to redress that and it does so in a way that's different to all other blockchains that we've typically seen. Uh, so if you go through and have a look at this article, it really does explain how it, it aims to cut that double spending danger that's about to probably happen with the, the risk or the danger rather is about to happen with the the, the um, Bitcoin fork that's happening in November um, because whilst there's every measure being put in place to minimize it this particular blockchain is doing something that hasn't been really, really done before so it's worth having a look at this article guys because I found it really really interesting and it helps us separate perhaps once again generation one two and three blockchains uh, the next thing I wanted to show you was this article here. Um, this was by CoinIdle.com and it was titled Australians are to revolutionise scalability with their red belly blockchain. So again, their focus it seems to be, uh, from the things that I've read, including the white paper, is that the, the focus of the red belly blockchain is actually consortiums and enterprise. So, you know, that can be likened arguably to Blockstream, which we know sucks. Um, so hopefully they don't go down that track and they, they solely focus on uh, you know, the garnering support in the business sector, but they also support the public blockchain and obviously make it very useful for consumers like us. Uh, given that it has such incredible transactional capacity and such and it's so highly scalable, uh, and that it's Australian, I hope that they you know, do recognise its potential uh, within the blockchain, um, I guess, the blockchain and cryptocurrency space. So guys, this one here, once again, was reinforcing the value of it in terms of scalability. And sometimes the numbers are a bit different with each article, but generally they're really, really up. Um, and then they've got a bit of a pun or a play on words with the, is there lightning without thunder? Um, and they're talking obviously about the lightning network. And here they are explaining that there are new innovations that are coming. And if you look down, it explains that Dr. Vincent Gremley, who is the head of the Concurrent Systems Research Group. Now that's where I went, the University of Sydney, to find out more. That's actually the name of the entity that's sort of spearheading all of this research. Um, there was a, a really important statement that he made, and he said, as opposed to consortium blockchains, it, Red Belly blockchain can treat hundreds of thousands of transactions per second coming from a potentially unbounded number of clients. It offers a performance that scales horizontally, which ensures the security of transactions. So that's what I thought was really interesting because um, many people that I've, I've been listening to on YouTube, particularly one, but I won't name him, um, he was arguing that you know horizontal scaling is, pro is problematic. But clearly, some academics are arguing you know the converse in that there is a facility in it and being security, or there's a benefit to this method, this mode of, of scaling. So guys, the next thing I wanted to show you was actually the, uh, a really important research paper that was published by the team. And it was all about how this particular consensus that they've come up with, being the free Byzantine consensus for the Red Belly blockchain, um, they explain how it is so much better for consortium blockchains than the current proof of work ones that we see that seem to prevail in many of the different cryptocurrency um, arenas. And the reason why this is so valuable is that it explains particularly why Byzantine consensus is so good. And if you guys know much about other third generation blockchains, um, you, you'll know that NEO and Icon Foundation all um, have a type of 
uh, Byzantine style consensus. Um, there's others that are, I know that Aeon's considering some aspects of that whilst they are predominantly proof of stake so and they are looking at proof of intelligence as well over at Aeon in Canada but what is important to know is that this sort of separates from the original you know designs of, of Bitcoin and even some of the generation two so if you want to know a bit more about Byzantine consensus, consensus algorithms and why they're so prized by some academics then that's a read for you guys um, if you want to know more about uh, the project here is the man to contact his name is Vincent Gramley and uh, you know I'm sure you'd appreciate some conversations um, about it. And if also, uh, again, this was uh, some other information I found with regard to some publications. So guys, if, you want, if you're an avid reader of blockchain uh, data and you're highly technical, then you could go along and check this stuff out. Uh, and these are just some of the examples of the papers. So you've got one paper that was really valuable that I read called The Blockchain Consensus. Uh, and that was published again by the team. It helps you better understand it. And this one was brilliant. This explained why forkable blockchains are really the go for you know the future of blockchain, particularly in enterprise. And as you would know that proof of work models are not designed this way, they are forkable. And the team at Red Belly are actually advocates of the unforkable um, uh, consensus algorithms so that you know there is a maintenance of stability and that scale scalability isn't impinged on you know problems at the you know the consensus level which is kind of ironic because you know being the decentralized model that it is uh, really we shouldn't be having issues of consensus but we we presently are both you know in the generation one blockchain and also in other blockchains like ethereum so this is a you know potentially another way to consider the evolution of blockchain and where it's going and this i wanted to show you just really briefly this was a really interesting PowerPoint that I found that was a presentation done in Sydney. Um, and it just explains, there's our red belly snake. So the red belly black snake, if you don't know, it's a venomous snake in Australia, but many people think because of the way it looks, it's highly venomous. And whilst it is venomous, it's not one to, you know, worry too much about. We have a lot of snakes in Australia. Well, our most deadly one's actually called the fierce snake. It's a brown one. Um, so really it's more, probably just more of a metaphor of, you know, it's, you know its ability to scale you know i don't mean that because it has scales i mean it because you know perhaps you know the snake is a good metaphor for being aggressive and for being fast i'm not really sure you'd have to ask the team but it's certainly an aussie you know well-known aussie snake uh it's probably the most common in many areas and it's not that problematic guys it's you see it will make you sick but it won't kill you okay so getting to the actual point <laughs> getting off track um the roadmap so here, it just, it's really basic. It just shows you what a blockchain is. You can see it's really not designed for the public. It was more designed for a private presentation. But what I liked about it was it was really simple to differentiate between uh, basic blockchain structures and the difference between their consensus model and uh, others. So what they were saying is that there's a risk, again, of, um, of that replay that uh, Ivan on tech's been talking about. Uh, and again, trying to minimize that they go through all different strategies that they've employed but uh, here they've deduced it down to the unforkable blockchain method and that, that they're obviously they're advocates of it so again this was just like a graphic to reinforce their paper uh, in trying to advocate for a Byzantine consensus and if you want to check this out guys you certainly can but basically um, to you know to sum up the Belt Red Belly blockchain it's a new one it's generation 3 it's using a Byzantine consensus it's super fast in its testing phase um, and we are now at the question mark period point where we ask what's going to happen with the Red Belly blockchain what's Vincent and his team going to do are they going to release it as an ICO we really want to find out because the more we locate you know generation 3 blockchains of this nature that are so highly scalable the more we want to know as you know members of the crypto space so guys that's it from me i hope it's been informative red belly blockchain uh interesting thing coming up from australia it's brad it's blockchain brad signing off for today and i hope you had an awesome day cheers